Welcome to Ramsey Baptist Church and our online Sunday service on this VE celebratory weekend. You know, I'm never sure how to start these services. As I look at the empty chapel before me, uh, as I'm filming this video, I miss you all more than ever. I miss the congregational singing. But at the same time, you know, we have to say that God continues to be so good to us. We can still share the experience of his worship together through this service. And we remain one people in heart and in spirit through the work of Jesus Christ. We are truly blessed. Now a word of scripture that will lead us into our service this morning and introduce the theme that we're considering. And it's Psalm 119 verse 105. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Let's just pray together. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this opportunity that we have now to meet around your word and to sing your praises. We ask, Lord God, that you would please assure us of your presence and that by the power of your spirit you would give us a real sense of fellowship, one with another, though we're parted. We ask, Lord God, that you might shine the light of your word into our lives, that it might be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. And we ask, Father God, above all, that you would glorify yourself through our service of worship together now, to your glory. Amen. Well, now we're going to sing together. Our opening hymn is, I Heard the Voice of Jesus Say. And... We're not singing it to the normal tune that we usually do, but it's a tune that you will, I think, be familiar with. So let's sing together. I heard the voice of Jesus say. We'll just have some notices now. Uh, on Tuesday evening, I'll be live streaming another Bible study from home, continuing our series on Who is God? I have one video also left in the series on Gospel Promises that are for today. That should be available on Monday morning for you. And then I hope to have more videos uh, put up later in the week as normal. Crosswires and Time In have material also on Facebook to get involved in and to uh, take advantage of. And I hope you are all also taking part in 
Andrew's sunflower competition. And also, Andrew's encouraging us all now to send in video clips of us doing the actions to My Lord is Higher Than a Mountain, so that he can put a montage of it together for us. So please do uh, be thinking about how you could participate in that. It'll be good even just to see one another's faces for a few seconds on that video. Please do uh, send in your efforts to Andrew for that. I'd also like to thank those who have uh, already sent in their videos for the activity morning, for the crafts. Uh, they are looking absolutely fantastic, so my thanks to you for that. And also those who have been cutting out craft materials as well. Thank you for your hard work. I'm really excited to see what the finished product of our online activity morning will actually look like in half term. Peter, of course, continues to put out our prayer list each week. Please do make use of that for your prayers. Uh, some big situations that we need to pray for, some encouragement, some good news, as well as some difficult situations in our church that need our prayers. Now, I want to introduce to you the next three items that are going to take place in this service. First of all, we have a children's talk from my study. Then Andrew is going to lead us in prayer after which Keith is going to bring a reading to us from Mark chapter 4, verses 21 through to 25. Well, good morning. Often when I've been able to call the children out to the front of the chapel, I've, when I've said good morning to you, you've responded by shouting back good morning to me. I wonder if you're brave enough to do that in your own homes. This morning. Let's give it a try. Good morning. Well, I don't know whether you shouted good morning back to me or not. I hope that you did. Now I just want you to uh, listen to a little piece of music. I want you to see if you can recognise it and if you can tell me uh, what it is. Did you recognise it? It's the theme tune from the television programme Dad's Army. Well, that's not what it was originally used for. It's actually a popular song that was played during the Second World War. And I've played it because this is a very special weekend. This weekend we celebrate victory in Europe. 75 years ago, on the 8th of May, the war in Europe came to an end. And it was a time of great celebration. The streets were packed. People went out to celebrate the fact that the war in Europe was over. And yes, in other parts of the world, the war would still continue for a while. But in Europe, it was over. The Nazis had been defeated. And the streets were packed. And churches were packed as well. In fact, in St Paul's Cathedral, they had to have several services running straight after the other to get everybody in who wanted to gather together to give thanks to God for the victory in Europe. And people were looking forward to peace as well. But do you know the peace that they hoped for didn't really come? There are still wars being fought today. Soldiers are still dying for our country. But there's another victory that we think of as Christian that actually does secure real and lasting peace with God, peace that will last forever. Now, does anybody know what victory I'm talking about? That's right, I'm talking about the victory that Jesus Christ won on the cross of Calvary. As Jesus hung on that cross dying, he said these words, It is finished. It is finished. What he was saying was, 
I have done it. I've won the victory. The war between us and God is now over because Jesus Christ has won the victory. Like we won that victory in Europe 75 years ago. So the war in Europe was over. So on that cross, Jesus won the victory so that the war between us and God can be over. Of course, for that war between us and God to be over, we need to trust in Jesus, don't we? And we need to say sorry for our sin. So yes, it's wonderful to celebrate victory in Europe and to take this weekend to commemorate what happened 75 years ago. It's even more amazing that every Sunday we come together as God's people to celebrate victory that Jesus Christ won on the cross of Calvary. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. We come before you this morning to give thanks for not just who you are, but for what you have done. You are the creator God, the sustaining God, the God of love, and by your mercy and grace, you sent your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, as Saviour. We give thanks for him who willingly carried out your will to give up his life upon that cross at Calvary, that we might have reconciliation with the true and living God, in whom we can put our trust. As we praise and worship you today, although we are physically parted, we are together by the power of the Holy Spirit. And in these very challenging times, we thank you for your care and protection for each one of us. We pray for those grieving the loss of loved ones at this time. We pray for strength and comfort for those who are suffering from this worldwide pandemic of coronavirus. We ask, Father, that you will help us as we are confined to our homes. But Lord, we know that you are the one that is in control and we commit and commend it all into your hands. Please, Lord, protect us especially those who are particularly vulnerable. Protect and uphold those of our key workers, especially those giving medical care and giving help and support to those in social care. Many have given their lives to help others and we give thanks for them. This weekend we also celebrate VE Day and pay tribute to all those who fought in those battles to maintain our freedom. Many suffered, many lost their lives, and some lived to bear witness. And we give thanks to all as we remember them and the liberation of Europe. We give thanks for those who served their country for others. We pray for the preaching of the word today, your word, O Lord, in any way that it is proclaimed, the truth that it might touch each one of us. And we ask that the gospel will go forward with great power today, that our ears will be opened and our hearts will receive your word as it is brought to us unto salvation. We pray these things and ask for the forgiveness of our faults and our failings in the name of our Lord and Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Mark chapter 4, verse 21 to 25. That's Mark chapter 4, verse 21 to 25. Also he said to them, Is a lamp bought to be put under a basket or under a bed? Is it not to be set on a lampstand? 
For there is nothing hidden which will not be revealed, nor has anything been kept secret, but that it should come to light. If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. Then he said to them, Take heed what you hear. With the same measure you use, it will be measured to you, and to you who hear, more will be given. For whoever has to him, more will be given. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. So reads the word of God. When a sailor is at sea, they can see the light from a lighthouse up to 20 miles away. That limitation is not to do with the light coming from the lighthouse. It's actually to do with the curvature of the earth, which stops them seeing the light. Light is an amazing thing. Think about our sun. At the moment, it's about 93 million miles away from the Earth, and it is taking light 8 minutes and 19 seconds to reach us from the Sun. But that light that takes all that time to get to us is still bright enough to illuminate the day wonderfully, still bright enough to shine through the clouds even. It's bright enough that if you stare at it for too long, it will blind you. And if you spend too long out in it, it can burn you. Light is an amazing thing. Light is a wonderful thing. Light is a powerful thing. And that's why the Lord Jesus Christ uses light to illustrate who he is and his mission. That's what he does in this passage. He is talking about light, but what he's really talking about is himself and his mission. And how we are to make the most of that spiritual light that he gives to us. So my title this morning then is Making the Most of the Light. Making the Most of the Light. Something we do, isn't it? We try to make the most of the light. When winter is coming and the nights are drawing in, we change our clocks so that it doesn't get dark quite so early, so that we can make the most of the light so that we have as many daylight hours available to us as possible to get done everything that we need to get done. We like to make the most of the light. Well, this sermon is all about making the most of the spiritual light that Jesus Christ brings into this world and into our lives. We're going to look at the purpose of light. We're going to look at the power of light, the privileges of light, the promise of light, and the pressure of light. Those are our points that we're going to consider together this morning. And we begin by considering the purpose of light. The purpose of light. You know, right at the beginning of our Bibles, back in Genesis 1 verse 2, this is what we read. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the first thing God did when he began to create was he created light. Genesis 1 verse 3, then God said, let there be light. And there was light. God made light to shine, to eliminate the darkness, to banish the night, to illuminate things so that they could be seen. God wanted his creation to be seen. So he created light so that his creation could be seen, so that people could see the things that he had made once he had made those people as well. Light was made to shine. So to get the most out of light, to enable it to shine over as much as possible, what you do is you put it in a prominent place. But generally speaking, that's high up. Think of that bright light that God has given to us to light this world. Where has he put it? He's put it high up. He has put the sun above our heads. Think about the lights that you have in your home as well. Most of them are high up, perhaps on the ceiling or high up on a wall. Because that's the place where they shed the most light. Where they can light up the room the most efficiently. When Jesus says in verse 21, Is a lamp brought to be put under a basket? Under a bed? Is it not to be set on a lampstand? His disciples, because those are the ones he's talking to, would have been thinking, Well, it's to be put high up. We know that. We have lampstands in our homes. We have oil lamps in our homes and, and we put them on those lampstands. It would be silly for us to light a lamp and then hide it away. 
It would be wasteful of all that light. Why would anyone want to do that? Now, we always make the most of the light we have. But of course, Jesus is actually making a spiritual point here. And that becomes more clear as we read on. So that's what we need to consider. What or who this light is that he's saying we should be making the most of. And as I've already implied in this sermon, Jesus is the light. Jesus is the light. He says so himself, John 8 verse 12. Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. He is the light of life. And so are the words he speaks. Remember that verse we started our service with, Psalm 119, verse 105. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Jesus Christ is the light and all of the words that he speaks shine that light into our lives. He has come into this world for that purpose, to bring his light into our lives so that we don't have to be walking in darkness anymore. He's come to shine the light of God into our lives so that we can see what we're doing and so that we can see where we're going. So when he talks about putting light on a lampstand so that it's high up, so that it lights everything up, so that we can make the most of it. He is telling us that we have to make the most of him. And we have to make the most of everything that he says. We have to elevate him. We have to lift up his word, so that the light of these things shine on everything. We have to make the most of the light, because it is so powerful. Look at verse 22. For there is nothing hidden which will not be revealed, nor has anything been kept secret, but that it should come to light. Secondly then, consider the power of the light. The power of the light. You know, light has great power. It banishes darkness and it illuminates things. When the sun rises, the night disappears. Darkness cannot compete with light. If you've lost something and you're searching for it in the house, you don't do that in the dark. No, you put the lights on. You may even get a torch to help you see into those dark corners because that's what light does. It banishes darkness. This is its power. Verse 22, for there is nothing hidden which will not be revealed, nor has anything been kept secret, but that it should come to light. Nothing can stay hidden when light shines on it. The light reveals what is hidden. The light reveals what is hidden. It banishes the darkness so that we can see what's really there. I'm doing a lot of work in, the, in our back garden at the moment and I have work clothes that I wear for that job. They're covered in paint and, and other stains at this moment in time. But you can only see how tatty those clothes are in the light. If I was to wear them in the dark, you wouldn't be able to see any of those stains or any of those tears in those clothes. And in just the same way, when the light of Jesus Christ shines into our lives, that's when we see the dirt. That's when we see the stains. That's when we see our sin. Just think of one example. The greatest commandment the Lord Jesus Christ ever gave. It's found in Luke 10 verse 27. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbour as yourself. What stains, what tears, what sin those words actually show up in our lives. Can you honestly say, I've done that, I can tick that box, that's how I love God, and I'm loving my neighbour as myself? No one can. We all fall short of that standard. As we look at Jesus Christ, the light he shines into our lives, it makes our sin plain to us. Now this isn't easy for us. Seeing our sin is not an easy thing. It can often be a hard and a painful experience because it shatters this illusion that we have created about ourselves, that essentially we are good people, that really we deserve God's favour. It fills us with guilt and with shame. It demands a complete change from us, a, a turning around of our lives from living for ourselves to living for the Lord Jesus Christ. 
You know, John tells us in his gospel in chapter 3 and verse 19. And this is the condemnation, that the light has come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. But my friends, as hard as this is, as difficult as this is, as much as we don't want to do it because it's so painful, it actually needs to happen. And it needs to happen now. It's far better to have our sin revealed, exposed now and dealt with now than it is for us to ignore it and leave it till the day of judgment when it will be too late. You see, the light reveals what is hidden. Your sin is not going to remain hidden forever. But that isn't all that light does. Light also shows us the way. Light shows us the way. Think of a runway at an airport for a moment. It's lit up with bright lights that the pilot can see from many miles away as he's flying in to land his plane. He knows exactly where he is to go and where he is to land because the light guides him, the light shows him the way. When we read Psalm 119 verse 5, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. In those words, God is saying to us that his word, the words of Jesus Christ, point the way. And of course, the way is actually the Lord Jesus Christ himself. As we look at the Lord Jesus Christ, we're not just looking at the light of the world. We're also looking at the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. We're looking at the sacrifice that pays for our sin. The one who can make us right with God. The one who can make us children of the living God. This is the power of the light. This is the mission of the Lord Jesus Christ. He has come into this world to save sinners. To save sinners by showing us our sin and also by going to the cross to pay for that sin. Yes, Jesus Christ is using parables to hide the truth from his enemies, but that was a necessity, not his purpose. He actually came into this world to be a light. He came into this world to shine out. He wanted to be clear in the message that he preached. He didn't want to hide his light under a basket. He wanted to put it on a lampstand. He wants us still to be put in his word on a lampstand. Because he wants as many as possible to see this light. And that's something that should make every single one of us think. Not just, how can I make the most of this light in my life? How can I make the most of Jesus and his words in my life? But how, especially during this lockdown period when things are so different, how can I let the light shine into the lives of those around me? How can I lift up the Lord Jesus Christ and his word and and put him on a lampstand so that his light illuminates as many as possible? Maybe you're stuck at home with your family at this moment. How can you bring the light of the Lord Jesus Christ into their life? Well, of course, you can live out uh, the fruit of the Spirit, Galatians 5, 22 and 23, before them. You can do things like that. If you have children, well, make use of cross wires and time in, as well as the Sunday school and the Bible class. As a Christian parent, don't neglect any opportunity that you have to bring the light of the gospel into the lives of your children. But what about your neighbours? What about your friends? What about your extended family? How are you going to put the light on a lampstand so that it shines into their lives? How can you reach out into the town of Ramsey with the gospel at this time? You see, that brings me on to my third point this morning. The privileges of the light. The privileges of the light. We've seen that Jesus Christ is the light and that he shines into our lives through his example, through his life and also through his words. We've seen that he shows us our sin and that he shows us the way of salvation. This is the purpose and the power of the light that we've already looked at. And so what a massive privilege it is for us to actually hold the word of God in our hands. To have the Bible, to have this book that shows us the Lord Jesus Christ. This book which is filled with all that he has to say. This book which is filled with the light that we're talking about. What a privilege. And with that privilege, of course, comes a tremendous responsibility. 
We must listen to the right voice. We must listen to the right voice. Jesus says in verse 23, if anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. We sometimes sing a hymn, don't we? Above the voices of the world around me, my hopes and dreams, my cares and loves and fears, the long-awaited call of Christ has found me. There are so many voices that you can hear. So many voices that you can tune into and listen to. So many different voices vying for our attention. Not just the ones we hear externally from outside, but also the ones that come from within. The voice of our hopes, the voice of our dreams, the voice of our fears. We can listen to these voices. The voice of materialism, the voice of secularism, the voices of sin and temptation, as well as all these internal voices. But we have to listen to the right voice. The voice of the Lord Jesus Christ. One of the biggest dangers perhaps that we face today are those voices that are seeking to reimagine what Jesus said or what Jesus Christ meant. Today we're sometimes told that the things that the Bible clearly calls sin are actually good. That's taught from far too many pulpits today. We have people trying to reinterpret the way of salvation, telling us that God will save everyone, telling us that every path through life takes us to God as our loving Heavenly Father. Again, it's heard in far too many church buildings today. We have people telling us Jesus was just a man, that he isn't really relevant to us in our 21st century, us educated Westerners with all of our first world problems. We must hear the right voice. We must listen to the Lord Jesus Christ. Shut out all those other voices. Listen to Jesus. Indeed, actually, the truth is the moment my words depart from his truth, then you must also be shutting out my voice as well, because you must only listen to the right voice. The words of Jesus Christ reveal the light of God. His words and his words alone. We must hear the right voice and we must share the right voice. Look at verse 24. Then he said to them, take heed what you hear. With the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. And to you who hear, more will be given. Now here we have a picture from the marketplace. Now as a child, there were several corner shops nearby to, to where I lived. And you could go and buy sweets in any one of these corner shops by the ounce. But there was one particular shop where the measure always seemed to be just a, a little bit more generous than in the others. So that was the shop that we always went to. Because we felt we got more sweets when we went there. It was a generous measure. And because it was a generous measure and because everybody thought the same, that was the shop that everybody went to. So they got more business than the shops around. When Jesus says, with the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. He's talking about being generous with the light. He's talking about using a generous measure as you give out, as you share, as you shine the light of Jesus Christ into other people's lives. What he's saying is the more generous we are, with the gospel that has been entrusted to us. The higher we lift up the Lord Jesus Christ in our lives, the higher we exalt his word so that it shines out clearly into the lives of others, the more light Jesus Christ will be pleased to pour into our lives. You know, you don't grow as a Christian by hoarding the gospel truth and by holding onto it tightly in that sense, by keeping it to yourself. No, you grow by making use of the gospel, by spreading it out as far as you can, by exalting the Lord Jesus Christ and his truth in all of your actions and in all of your words, by living lives of service to him. There's a lovely story told of a young American lad who went on holiday to Europe. And whilst he was on holiday in Europe, he visited a, a couple of cathedrals 
And he was amazed by the stained glass windows and those men and those women that he saw illuminated in them by the sun. When he returned home, he went to church on Sunday morning and the Sunday school teacher asked him a question. What is a saint? Well, remembering those images in those stained glass windows, this boy quickly answered, a saint is someone the light shines through. A saint is someone the light shines through. Are you a stained glass window? Does the light of Jesus Christ shine through you? Or does sin still cling to you in such a way that, that the glass is darkened so a little light comes through? Maybe you hide your faith. Maybe it's like you've pulled a blackout curtain across to block out the sun, to shine, to stop it shining through you so that little or no gospel light shines out. The light of Jesus Christ will be given to you in proportion to how you make use of it. So shine, shine generously, shine tirelessly with the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. And to you who hear, more will be given. That brings me to my fourth point, the promise of the light. Verse 25, for whoever has to him, more will be given. We've already considered the reality of this promise for today. For whoever has more will be forgiven. More will be given, sorry. We can know more of the light. We can see more of the Lord Jesus Christ by making the most of him. By sharing the light that he gives to us with others. The more we use it, the more will be given to us. But I also want you to think about the eternal nature of this promise. For whoever has, to him more will be given. You have so much now through the light of the Lord Jesus Christ. You've got your sin dealt with. It's penalty and it's power broken in your life. You have friendship with God. Reconciliation. You have restoration. In fact, he is pouring out every heavenly blessing on you, even now. But my friends, his beginning His giving has only just begun. His giving has only just begun. We're looking forward to being with the Lord Jesus Christ, which Paul describes as being far better. We look forward to a new heavens and a new earth where righteousness dwells, where God is going to wipe away all of the tears from our eyes. That's our future. Eternity in the immediate presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Eternity with the light of the world. Whoever has to him more will be given. We have an eternity to look forward to in which we are going to enjoy this light in ways that we haven't even begun to imagine here and now on this earth. So make the most of the light today so that you will have more of it to enjoy in eternity to come. But of course, with this promise in these words also comes a pressure. Look at verse 25. For whoever has to him more will be given, but whoever does not have even what he has will be taken away from him. Fifthly then, think about the pressure of the light. The pressure of the light. But whoever does not have even what he has will be taken away from him. To some degree, every single person benefits from the light of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every hug a parent receives from their child or their grandchild is a benefit of this light. Because every act of kindness, every act of love is a benefit of this light. Every breath each person draws is a benefit of God's patience and God's long-suffering as he waits till all who will believe have turned to him. Every drop of water we drink, every mouthful of food we enjoy, it's all of God's common mercy to us. It's all the light shining. But Jesus' words here are stark and they are clear. If you don't make the most of that light today, what little you have experienced of it in this life is going to be ripped away from you in eternity. All those good things of God's common mercy that you enjoy every single day, that perhaps you take for granted every single day, love, kindness and so on, 
It's going to be taken away from you in eternity if you're not making the most of the light today. Hell is darkness. Hell is the complete absence of the light of God, of all of those good things that God gives us. Those who ignore the light in this life lose all the light for the whole of eternity. That's the pressure of the light. So make the most of the light today as it is shining in your life. I'm not suggesting that's easy. I'm not suggesting taking the gospel light and shining it into the darkest corners of your mind and your heart is an easy task or a pleasant task because it isn't. It is hard, but it is so necessary. It is so important and you're better off doing it now than to have it done for you on the day of judgment when what little light you have will be taken away. Come today. And stand in the light of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let his life illuminate yours. Let his words be the light to your path. Be someone that the light shines through. Be one of those stained glass windows. For as he promises, for whoever has to him, more will be given. Oh my friends, make the most of the light today. Amen. Well, we're going to close our service now by singing our final hymn, Light of the World. Let's just sing together.
Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.